completely surprising. It shows that many of the volunteers raised there were local Muslims who are now volunteering to fight with the Habsburgs against the Ottomans. But things went wrong. Piccoloni died of plague. Uh, he seems to have infected Bogdani, who had been ministering to him on his deathbed. Bogdani then himself dies of plague at the end of the year. The Ottomans sent a large army uh, from Macedonia. There's a battle at the beginning of January 1690, the Battle of Kachanik, and uh, the Habsburgs are defeated. And they panic and they retreat very, very rapidly. And one reason for speed is that the Ottomans also have an allied force of Tartars, Crimean Tartars, who have traditionally fast cavalry uh, in bands that are now sweeping into Kosovo. And this is what happens, and Kosovo is now plundered by Tartars, it's reoccupied by the Ottomans. The Habsburg forces leave. People who had volunteered for them either disappear into the background or some leave with them. Uh, but there's no organized retreat. Everything is too fast for that. There's panic. The Orthodox uh, Patriarch, Arsenian Tsunorovich or Tsunorovich, uh, retreats also very rapidly. Uh, he has not been directly involved in supporting the Habsburgs. He was actually in Montenegro at the time. There's a lot of histor historiography in Serbia claiming that he was the person who negotiated and who raised volunteers, not Pietro Bogdani. But we can demonstrate that this is wrong because we have documents showing he wasn't in Kos Kosovo at the time. Uh, the Serbian patriarch was actually visiting monasteries in Montenegro. But still, he comes back to Paya just in time for these events. He knows that they will plunder anything <coughs> Christian, they will not discriminate closely. So he flees. And we have a detailed record of someone who fled uh, at the same time from there, saying he just escaped on horseback very quickly with a few people. He goes north. The Habsburg forces regroup during the rest of 1690 in Belgrade. Uh, the Serbian patriarch joins them in Belgrade. But at some time, as the Ottomans continue to advance, he decides to uh, leave Belgrade with Serbs, Serb <coughs> refugees that have now gathered with him there, and to move north into Hungarian territory. And so at some time in the autumn, he moves into Hungary with quite a large number of people. Now we have documents written by him uh, not long afterwards to the Austrian authorities. In one, he says he came with 30,000 people. In the other, he says he came with 40,000 people. And he specifies people. These documents are written uh, in Italian, and uh, well, the, the documents we have are um, administrative documents in Habsburg archives, and they clearly say anime, souls, 30,000 souls. Now, on the basis of these events, Serb historiography has claimed that there was a mass exodus of the Serb population of Kosovo, and that they went en masse, marching all the way to Hungary. Why this claim? Well, many years later, in the 18th century, one Serbian monk, writing a chronicle in, in the monastery of uh, Ravenica, <coughs> said that the patriarch had moved to the Habsburg lands with 37,000 families. And that claim was repeated by Serb historians in the 18th century, and it got into the general historical literature uh, in the 19th century. The claim seems to have no factual basis. It cannot contradict the two documents that we have signed by Arsenian himself from the period when he said 30,000 souls, 40,000 souls. Um, but somehow this larger figure had a powerful effect on Serbian writers and historians in the 19th century. So we have one Hungarian Serb, Alexander Stojatkovic, who wrote in 1860 that it was 37 to 40,000 families that each family was a big extended family, the so-called Zadruga, of 15 or 20 people. So that gave a minimum total of 550,000 Serbs, or a maximum of 800,000. And there were similar calculations by other writers, such as Spiridion Gomcevic, who was a, an influential publicist here in Belgrade in the late 19th century. Now, these claims were rejected by serious historians, um, 
classic uh, rejection by Hilarion Rubakans, a, a great 19, late 19th century uh, story. He said that the doctrine referred to souls. And a few other modern historians have repeated that correction, um, Dushan Popovich, a serious 20th century story. But many writers, most writers in circuit, have ignored the correction because this magic figure of hundreds of thousands of souls, it satisfied some deep and I would say mythical purpose in the writing of the history of these events. And so if you look at um, even you know, a famous scientist such as Jovan Skij, the great ethnographer and geographer, he wrote that 35 to 40,000 families moved. Uh, if you look at the website of the Embassy of Serbia in, in Budapest today, you will find it informing you that uh, Arseni came with several tens of thousands of families, and so on. So this myth continues. Now, if we go back to the facts, 30,000 or 40,000 people, of course, there is no reason to think that all of those people came from Kosovo. But there is good reason to think that they didn't. Because we know that he certainly didn't march with them from Kosovo. And these are people who came from that gathering of Serb refugees in Belgrade later in the year. Who was gathering in Belgrade? Serbs from all the areas that had collaborated with the Habsburgs and were now under pressure from the Ottoman advance. And the areas that had collaborated longest were in the area between Belgrade and Nish. And if you look at the records of the meeting that he held with leading Serb dignitaries in Belgrade, only there's nobody there mentioned from Kosovo. If you look at the records of the Serb community in Buda after these events, you find that where they give the origins of the Serbs, only about 20% are from Kosovo. So let us say up to a quarter of those 30,000 or 40,000 people who came to Hungary, perhaps up to a quarter, had their origin in Kosovo. But first, that is not a huge number compared to the mythical historical. We're talking about a maximum of 10,000 Serbs from Kosovo ending up in Hungary. And secondly, uh, this is um, something quite different from uh, the claim that there was a purposive migration from Kosovo all the way to Hungary. So how did these myths develop? Well, a large population of Serbs remained in Hungarian territory. Um, not just these ones, but during that Habsburg Ottoman War, there were other movements of population. Uh, there is a large body of Serbs from the Banat moved further into Hungarian territory. And there was a tradition of the so-called Kraina, the Grenza, the border lands where they had a special system of um, local uh, populations trained to be fighters on the frontier with some privileges that were not under the full civil administration of the Hungarian state. And so this was the situation in the 18th century. And when there were wars, these serfs were prized and valued by the Habsburg authorities as good fighters. But when there was peace, there was always pressure from the authorities to reduce their status, incorporate them into the civil administration of Hungary, or later Austria-Hungary. And this was unpopular. They wanted to keep their privileges. In the 18th century, one large group actually went off in protest to Russia uh, because they did not want to be absorbed just into a Hungarian state. And so they always wanted to emphasize that they had a special status, a special history, a special formation. And this became politically very uh, serious in 1848, the year of revolutions in Central Europe, um, the year of Kossuth, the great Hungarian uh, nationalist hero, um, when the Serbs suddenly found themselves in a position where if Kossuth had his way, they would be totally absorbed into a kind of nationalist new Hungarian political formation. So they became much more loyal to the Austrians, to Vienna, they fought quite strongly against the Hungarians, and they demanded their special status and their privileges. And by now, of course, they had historians.